This week's video is about my brand new sump. And I know I've been talking about it on the live stream lately, but I thought this would give you a nice, clean, edited version of it from every angle. So what we're gonna do is kind of go through the process of getting it built. I cut out all the pieces on my CNC machine named Minion. I used 3 8 cast acrylic for the entire project because I wanted something durable and strong that would hold up for 10 years or longer. The previous sump I had lasted nine years and I just decided I wanted something nicer. And so I went and did an upgrade. And as you're seeing here, it took a while. It probably took about four days or so to build the sump itself where you have to glue it and let it sit and cure before you can turn it again, especially the more complex the inner parts are when it's not just a regular rectangle. In this uh, one clip, you can see kind of a walk around. This is the top side of the sump. Uh, the refugium is against the table. The back upper corner there is the skimmer section, and this is the return zone. And it's really big, as you guys know. I did a lot of checking to make sure things were right, and I was back to Minion to cut out some more pieces. I had to, of course, cut out dividers. I had to cut out the top piece, the, the base itself, which is what I'm gluing on right here. I needed more light to see what I was doing. It was too dark in here, so I grabbed some studio lighting. And here's the top with the cutouts for the, uh, the cooling fans. And I used the pin method. So here is a seam that I'm gluing. And then it's upside down, that's the bottom. And there, here's the final product. The next thing I built was the modular sock box, which was an idea to run a seven inch filter sock inside the sump that's removable so if I just can't stand it, don't like it, need more space, I can just remove it. So I built this out of cast acrylic as well. It's about eight and a half pounds. It's not going anywhere. And it just presses up against the side of the sump where those two bulkheads pour in. Those are my emergency drains. So they'll only have water going in the sock when I choose to use them. And finally, I needed a new ATO reservoir to hold my top off water because the old one was too big and impossible to get into. So I made one that was three inches lower so I could get better access. It's also made of 3 8 cast acrylic so the walls won't blow out or bow out or bulge. And it holds around, I think, 42, 43 gallons. The last one held 45, so it's not much of a change. I ordered all my plumbing online because that's what I do. I needed all kinds of things to completely redo all my plumbing, including brand new bulkheads, unions, adapters, gate valves, black PVC pipe, I just wanted to have everything on hand so when it was time to do this, I didn't have to go anywhere and buy something, especially something that would be white and boring. Shane came over to help me with this install and brought his son Gabriel, who did a lot of the filming at the first part of this transition. Uh, they showed up around 3.30 in the afternoon and we worked well into the night. By 10.30 at night they were gone, but it was great to have him following us around with a camera to kind of show what was going on. I, mean, I appreciate all the help at the same time. Oh, you know, I understand. If I'm messing with it, I know exactly how it works. I'm here for heavy lifting. <laughs> exactly. Well, my dad does do the same thing every once in a while. Are you yeah. sure you want to lift that? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, why am I so I'm sore? 50, I didn't even touch it yet. I'm 50 50 on that. The basic process of doing this changeover is to get the reef tank to stand alone and just kind of operate without a sump. So there are certain things you're gonna to wanna to do. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you turn off everything that's not needed. So you, because you're gonna unplug everything. You're gonna unplug the skimmer, the heaters, the reactors, the dosers. You're gonna remove any kind of probes that you measure with. You're going to roll up any kind of tubing. You need to get everything completely out of the way so you have room to put the new item in. Guess I'll turn off the return pump. Yeah. And then we gotta turn off the Vectra too. That's it guys, you're on your own. Good luck living. Yeah. <laughs> then... You got jack valves on everything, right? It's an automatic thing. Okay. I have a reverse jack valve. Oh, right on. Easy enough. Right. It is all up inside the disc, too. Right. 
it's best to be very actively involved to make sure you know exactly what's happening because you know how your system works and how it comes apart. I mean, everything has to be out of our way. They're trying to ask me out of the way, too, you know? Yeah. So. I should have brought five gallon buckets from the house. I have some buckets, too. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, I've got buckets and I got those jugs. So, I mean, we could do five gallons, just pump, 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 and just go into different ones. Mm -hmm. Or you just, like I said, I've got super long tubing that can go out the front door and we just pump it out. I just hate wasting them and you're not sure. Yeah. Maybe we should do. Hmm. I'm just trying to make sure that you get, I mean, the water in, it, in itself is still good. Well, that blue barrel's empty, right? Yeah, I can hold 55. Will. I just need to dump out that old. Is this just old RO or is it old, old salt? It's old salt water. Okay. That I just never used. Okay. Didn't trust it. Easy enough. The ATK is turned off, so that can be disconnected. I want to go back to the table. Like stat. I know you're living in there. <laughs> Um, nine years. Long time, huh? Yeah, that's a very long time. Wait, that's Most people are in and out of their stops within a year. I know. Well, yeah, and their tank. And their tank, yeah. <laughs> literally. Okay, so heaters have to come out. They don't get through the hard part. Just some visuals from the backside before we pulled out the last of the remaining items. You know, the, the pump, the heaters, the sock. Uh, then we had to drain and scoop out everything out of the refugium, too. Here, we got that on the box. You're hung up. Yeah. To be honest, this some looks bigger than the other. Yeah, and yet they're the exact same. Wow. Yeah. It was like a difference of a quarter of an inch. I was gonna say. Yeah. All right. That is disconnected. So it's not gonna turn off for two hours. Okay. Good. Yeah, I don't think it hurt if it lit set for longer than that, honestly. Right. I think you said extended time was like eight hours. What does that mean? Extended sitting. So oh, after, I see. Yeah. yeah. So this stuff will be here for now. You didn't fill this sock up in 24 hours, did you? No, I held it a Wait, do you have an eel? No. Nope. What is that thing? He does not have a carnivore tank. What he discovered were tiger tail cucumbers. I have lots of those in my reef tank, and here were a couple under the, under the corals, cleaning the sand like they do. So Gabriel and Shane came over to help me with this horrible project, and we've already removed a lot of the stuff that was in the sump, and we're about to pump out all the water. The system is running a little bit lower than normal because no return pump. 
The overflow box is getting new bulkheads. You can see things have been moved already. There's a pile of stuff in the way. That's got to come out. That's got to survive. We pumped some water out of the tank to make sure nothing would drain into the overflow box since that had to be emptied out. And we pumped water out of the sump into this barrel into a filter sock to trap any kind of garbage. Just in case I needed that water. We rescued the clownfish from the refugium and acclimated him back to the anemone cube. So he's back in there with his buddies. And we pumped out the rest of the water down the driveway. Next, we had to empty out the top off container. And then finally, it was time to just cut out some more plumbing. All the probes are up in the display tank to keep track of the tank's needs. And now we're ready to pull it all out. Check out the yellow sponge that's been growing inside the bubble tower quietly, completely out of sight for the last few years. Wow. With both acrylic vessels out of the way, we can see the pink foam that was installed nine years ago. Looks like the day I put it in, but I still removed it and cleaned everything out underneath. Both of these went to new owners. Inside the steel stand, I have a type of liner. This is a shower pan liner from Home Depot that I cut way back in 2010, glued the corners together and created a tray with a cutout right there by Shane's foot where water could then come out and go toward the floor drain if there was ever a flood. Using a sponge, I was able to clean it and it was like new again. After nine years, I'm able to trust it again for another 10 years. The new sump is in place and the top off container fit beautifully next to it. And it already looks great. There is still so much more to go, but it was really nice to get to this point in the project. We just finished installing the new sump. We took out the old one, it's in the backyard, ready to be cleaned up and go to the next owner. The new top off container is installed. I love it because I have some space here now finally, which I didn't have before. It was so close to the top, there was just no room. Now I have better access to deal with the top off pump, tubing, adjust the float. Um, we're about to add in all the stuff that was in the old one in here, so it's gonna get dirty, but that's okay. I love how it came out, I love how everything fit. And I'm really excited to see uh, if my tank just goes completely unaware that I made a change. A quick reminder, always hand tighten all bulkheads. Do not use any wrenches whatsoever. Slime water. Yeah. Slime water. Slime water. So here's some water that I saved. Yep. Top of container is filling up. And the sump is about to get its plumbing done. Working on the bulkheads. But we're starving right now. We gotta take a break and eat some food. But here's quite the mess. I still haven't done a plumbing tutorial on my YouTube channel. So I wanted to at least film a couple of fittings being put together. So I'm using clear primer here. It's a cleaner on the inside of my fittings. And then of course I'm gonna use it also on the piece of PVC pipe that's gonna be glued into those fittings so that there's nothing on them, no oils, no ink, no dirt. And then I apply the solvent or the glue liberally on both the part going in as well as the opening of the fitting. And this is a slow process. When it comes to plumbing, it takes a long time. There's no rushing this job because this fitting has to last forever. So you gotta just do it right. So you push it in all the way as far as it's supposed to go and then turn slightly. So that way the glue kind of spreads within the joint. And then after holding for a few seconds, otherwise the pipe will push out. Then you can run your finger around the rim to remove the excess glue and kind of make it look cleaner and nicer. And then you do it with the next piece and the next and the next until you're finally done. You need to know where things are gonna go and then measure the distance between them plus the extra that goes inside each socket as you cut each pipe. You do need to work in a certain particular order when it comes to setting up a tank, even if you're doing a redo, because if you just rush it and you say, well, let me put in the gravel now, let me put in the plants now, let me add water now, but your plumbing isn't done yet, you're actually working backwards. You want all the plumbing to be completely accomplished so it can be curing and drying while you're doing all the other things later. So I had to work on these drains one at a time until they were exactly right. And it was a slow, tedious, all night process. As the macroalgae sat in a bucket of salt water with no heat, no circulation, all the bristle worms came up to the surface. And I removed hundreds, 
before I put the plants back inside my new sump. The four drains are now all plumbed up. And here is the side view. So you can see a couple come out around the vortex and the other two go straight because there's nothing in their way. Come straight down. This is my gate valve that goes to the refugium. Got my two emergency drains here, which looks pretty good. And then on the other side is the main drain from the tank, which is this one here. And it comes down here. Another big gate valve goes down and into the bulkhead going into the sump. With that side done, I had to work on the other side and get the Vectra connected, get the manifold reconnected, get the drain from the anemone cube to flow into the sump itself. It just seemed like the project would never end. But finally, I was done, glue was curing, and I could put in some reborn calcium reactor media as substrate for the refugium instead of sand. I wanted to try something different based on some suggestions from friends. All that was left was to start filling up the sump with some nice, clean, new salt water. I had about 90 gallons on hand in that container. I checked it for alkalinity first, and it was low, so I buffered it up, and then I pumped it into the sump. Now, the tank had been without heat or anything for about 15, <laughs> 14 hours, so the tank was around 77 degrees, and so was the water in my vat, which worked out perfectly fine because... That way, as soon as everything was running and mixing together and my heaters kicked on, it would bring the tank temperature back up to around 78 degrees. Uh, it's always nice to see the water flow from zone to zone and kind of look at everything. My top-off container is already almost full to the top because I've been working on this all night long. And I'm hoping that the L1 won't have any leaks. I'm, you know, I'm hoping none of these connections have leaks. The only way to find out is to run water through the pipes. Got my substrate in, which is calcium reactor media. There's the water line in front of my refugium to show me the return zone, so I can see how much water's in there, because that won't be visible once everything is growing in and full of plants. Top off container. No drip under the Vetra, good sign. Fucking up the refugium. I didn't rinse this media, so it's gonna be a little cloudy, but I'm not too worried about it because it is calcium reactor media and my tank can definitely benefit from calcium carbonate. By 6.30 a.m. I was completely done and the sun was starting to come up. Waking up, the first thing I did was of course check to see how the tank was doing. And what do I see? My top-off container is filled to the brim. It's literally overflowing into my pond liner, across the floor in the fish room, and of course off into the workshop as well. What had happened was the brand new float in the top-off container did not stop the water. Brand new and defective. So I replaced it with another new one and I'm hoping that one will take care of the problem so this doesn't happen twice. It was kind of a cool stress test to verify that my seams can hold all the water, which they definitely can. I have zero doubts about the work that I do. Despite the wet floors, the reef looked great. No ugly surprises to be worried about. So the tank has been running now for 15 hours since the new sump was installed with all the new drains. So I wanted to kind of just do like an update. Some of this might seem repetitive due to previous edits, but we'll see what happens here. So this is my main drain that is going down into the sump and pouring into the skimmer section for now. This is the waste collector for the trident, which is sitting right here on the edge of my sump on its official shelf. The protein skimmer hasn't really pulled much out since I just used basically 70 gallons of brand new water to set up the new sump. And this is old waste because I didn't empty it out yet. The sump is actually a little too full right now. I overfilled it accidentally, so I'm just going to let that evaporate because my salinity needs to rise a little bit anyway. So I'm going to let that come down. This will come down to about here. That's the normal water level I want. There's the Abyss return pump. That right there is the strainer that goes to the Vectra L1, which goes up and feeds into the anemone cube and also feeds this manifold 
for if I want to run any kind of reactors. I just kind of put it there because I didn't know where else to put it. There's my calcium reactor. Behind it, or what I call the front, is the refugium. And you can see one fan is spinning. I haven't installed the other ones yet. This is the dosing pump that feeds the calcium reactor, and this one doses Nopox, which I am currently out of. So I got more bottles on the way. And that kind of gives you an overview. Uh, so water's pouring in right there, and it's pouring in right there, but there's virtually nothing coming out of the emergency drains, which is okay. Uh, that little tiny bit, you know, sometimes it comes out a little bit, that's just me dialing it in. I have all new plumbing, newly glued parts, new sump, everything's fresh, so I'm, it's gonna take a little time for all the plumbing to slime up. For the most part, it's bubble free. I'm very happy with that. There's a little bit of bubbles happening from the refugium where the water comes through the teeth. This is the front side. And for now, as you can see, the light is shining over the refugium zone because it's what I already own. I might change it out with something different. And you can see there's no shield behind there to keep the things behind it from getting covered in algae. So that is coming very, very soon. You can see that one black line that is the drain from the anemone cube coming into the baffles, where I also put my heaters just to get them out of the way for now. I might just put all three of them right there, but for now they're in. I've got them scattered. And my probes are right there. My top off system is right there, the ATK. And this is the fan brackets again. And see, I can see the front now, which I love. I can see how much water's in the return zone. And I'll probably put some kind of a mark or a sticker or something there, and I'll just know my water has to be here, not here, <laughs> and definitely not here. The macroalgae is the same I've always used. It was filled with bristle worms, I mean hundreds, and I removed as many as I could and just put the plants in, and they all, you know, because of the flow, pushed to this end. So this will just fill in over time. And then for the substrate, I actually used calcium reactor media. Uh, a couple of people recommended it to me instead of sand. And I thought, why not? And then this is the new uh, ATO reservoir, my auto top-off reservoir, which was the only thing that went wrong this morning when I went to sleep. So it didn't turn off like I was hoping. The float was all the way to the top, and yet the container filled to the very brim, up to the top, and poured into my pond liner, and then, of course, went into the French drain. And so, you know, I didn't have a flood, but... I had that thing running for several hours while I was taking a quick sleep. In the meantime, I've replaced the float with a new one, and I'm hoping that will resolve it. I'll find out tomorrow when I actually use the top-off pump to add water to the system. Also, I wanted to tell you, oh yeah, so here's something interesting. Everyone always talks about, and we talked about this on a live stream, they say, why don't you make the baffles dark or black to prevent light from shining through? Well, this is a clear piece of acrylic. This is a clear piece of acrylic, but I want you to look at the lighting here, and I want you to look inside here and see the difference, how dark it is. Light just does not pass through acrylic the way one might think that could grow algae. Now, I might put a black divider here just for looks to kind of create a, a complete black shield between the sump and the top-off container, but you can see that's bright and that's dark. I think it's very interesting. And then we can look through and you can see it's darker compared to the sump behind it. So that's kind of the whole tour of what happened. I am super happy with the way it all came out. It was tiring as I expected because I knew it would take forever to switch it all out, to pull out the old, clean everything up, install the new, run new plumbing. And uh, let me explain this one thing. So on the other side, I showed you a valve. This is a smaller one that's feeding the refugium, which, as you can see, is making the water move because those plants wouldn't move if there wasn't flow. But there's, on the surface, no bubbles, no spatter, no salt creep. I love that. And then up here is my overflow box. And you can see how this is my refugium drain right here. That's below the water line which I might raise this up another half inch. And so I am getting nice pure water coming down instead of a bunch of bubbles. Then the two centers 
are my emergency drains. And then this is my main drain, which I had a bulk uh, piece of plumbing in there and I just removed it because I kept getting a Venturi. And this has been working out really, really well. And it's very clean. And later on, if I want to run a filter sock or the Clarisy, as I explained, I have a module that fits in that spot right there. I'll close this valve to make all the water go through those two pipes. And then they will feed into the sock and let me purify the water very quickly over, you know, 12 hours. I just finished feeding the fish and the return pump is off. And as I mentioned before, the sump has a little more water in it than it needs. But it worked out just fine. There's still plenty of space for more water if there was a need, if something was wrong. My overflow box is completely empty. And there's the sump basically in standby mode. I love how clean it is. In this corner, I've got the Camor pump that feeds the calcium reactor. I drilled a small hole in the rim of the sump to run this tubing straight down to a corner of the sump to draw water in. I've got the second Camor over in that location because it looked like a good spot and I turned the head sideways so that way the tubing isn't being bent and it draws from the note box and it goes into the sump. And I haven't had a need for the manifolds yet. So after that marathon, uh, I was wiped out. But today I did a live stream and everyone said, where is the sock box? So I thought I better add that to this video. The sock box is made of 3 8 acrylic. It's eight and a half pounds. It's supposed to go into a corner and stay there. And I really believe that's gonna work. So I created it to where I can put it in there slide it up against the wall of the sump where it fits right around the two emergency drains and water will then pour into it if I choose to close the other drains and force the water out those specific emergency drains into the sock box. It's kind of a cool workaround for a situation that I don't want to run all the time and if it's in my way I wanted the ability to remove it rather than having something glued in that's always there forever that might inhibit me from putting some other gear in the sump at some point when it gets invented. I have a few seven inch socks and I built this to specifically hold the sock exactly in there. It actually nestles down and clicks into the inner rim where it's flush with the acrylic and that way the water must pass through it and can't get around it. I realized there's no emergency drain on the sock box right now and part of the reason is I didn't want any sound to emanate from this as water's pouring in. I already have thought of another solution of something I can do to add to it to make it where it has an emergency drain that still keeps it quiet and that I will share later on. Uh, but it was kind of cool to film this for you guys and see it in action and see that it worked exactly as I'd anticipated. So as you notice, I'm twisting a handle there on the gate valve and that is closing the drain that goes into the skimmer section so that water will fill the overflow box and dump into the emergency drain, which will then pour into the sock box itself. For this next part, I'm gonna just be quiet so you can hear what it actually sounds like. The clear polycarbonate lid keeps the spatter inside the box and it keeps the sound trapped within it so I don't hear it. So even as water is gushing and sloshing into there, you just, it doesn't really, it's not bothersome at all. The only thing I wish I could do differently is have the sock be taller so that I could use more of the fabric. But since I'm not a sock guy and I tend to only run these things like three or four times a year, usually for like a day, it, it's just not necessary. It's, I hate the extra duty <laughs> of cleaning, so I don't use it very often. So when I want to do it occasionally, this is going to be great. And, you know, I can do some deep cleaning. I can, you know, really kick up the mess off the sand bed and let the sock trap it all. As I open the valve going to the main bulkhead there in the lower right corner, it will slow down the flow coming into the sock area which, you know, if I wanted to run this part-time, I could just have a little bit trickle in there 
or I can just completely shut it off. With this out of my way, I can go ahead and install the Clarisy in the exact same spot on its own little acrylic stand that I've already made, connect one of the drains into the Clarisy and let it do the exact same principle without having to deal with a sock at all. Regardless, I like that I gave myself some flexibility and some choices of how I wanted to operate this system and not be tied to one specific thing for the rest of my life. That lid keeps it nice and quiet. I wanted to show you what I did with the Trident tubing that draws a water sample from the sump. I have a spot over in this end over here where water is always new, but it's not chaotic and there's no air bubbles. It's way on the edge. So here is the feed line that's on the back of the Trident. The black line is where it draws in a water sample from your tank. I ran the feed line. I didn't cut it because I said don't change the length, but I ran it through a small piece of acrylic tubing right here to kind of support it. It's glued onto the sump's baffle, so I just fed the line right through it. I'll do like that. There's my sock box. <clears throat> and then the tube comes out here and goes down inside another acrylic tube right there. So here's a better view of that little tube. It's just a piece of quarter inch acrylic tubing that is glued to the baffle permanently. And the, the tubing comes down to about this far from the bottom of the sump. So it's drawing water from the bottom of the skimmer section going into the trident for measurements. So there you can kind of see the straw, clear straw that goes all the way down, and the black tubing that runs straight down to the bottom. Here you can see I'm moving the tubing up and down quite easily. So that's a nice permanent way of keeping it in place. You see a lot of bubbles, and that is because the anemone cube is draining into the bubble trap. I figured I like that spot better than the skimmer section, but that's not glued, so if I have to make a change, I will. I'm supporting it temporarily with a frag cup. But I kind of like in this general area because it's before the baffles and that way, again, a bubble-free zone. But who knows, I might make a change there. That is just a temporary situation. That's it, you now know everything I could possibly tell you. <laughs> if I missed anything or you have questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer those in the comments. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, I would welcome you to subscribe because there's always new content coming out with knowledge to help you be a successful reef keeper. And finally, I just want to wish you guys happy reefing and I hope that you guys have a good 4th of July.